For those of you who have access to um, my website, lynnmelody.com.au, you are able to download a Plastool supply list. Um, but for those who ha might have a little bit of trouble accessing that for any reason, or who simply would like to see what I'm talking about, uh, just come with me now and we'll quickly go through the main things that are quite important to bring with you if you are pastel painting away from your studio and have to make decisions about what to bring. Of course, I have a large selection of pastels over here, but we can't take that with us, so we um, make that list quite smaller. Now, what I have here is a core list. Now, what I call an absolute core list, uh, this is the minimum that I believe you can take with you. But because I've simply gone around the colour wheel, if, uh, coming from yellow to orange, I've gone into the pinks and the reds, I've gone into the browns, uh, the warm browns and the cool browns, warm browns being the burnt umbers and the siennas, and the cool browns are the raw umbers, and if you have time or space, the raw siennas. But then you look at the blues, so you look at the, the cooler blues, like the cobalts or the, tur or the turquoise. Uh, or if even a thalo blue. They are the cold blues and you must have something in the cooler range depending on what you are painting. If you are going to uh, sunny watery areas the turquoises are really quite important. But make your choices and also on the other side of that the warm blues. Now I consider ultramarine to be a warm blue and it's one of my favorite colors and I do have that um, moving from that, also moving into the violets or the purples. Rather than a straight solid purple, I find the purple greys to be much softer and a little bit more natural in the landscape. Working through them here, you find just that very simple range. But what is the one thing that I really have to stress? Uh, I have not named these colours. On purpose because if you go from one pastel maker to another pastel maker they'll probably have slightly different versions of naming them so I have literally just hit the concept of the colors going around and getting the light the medium and the dark in each of those ranges of course if you've got room you can sneak in at least one more in that tonal range, but the three are quite important. Um, as well as that, I have with me um, also a few little Contis, the sharp darks. Now these little sharp darks are very, very good. They give you sharp lines, long edge, give you straight lines which you can put a mast on a boat, or even at the very, very least sign your name at the end. Now, with these pastels, I'll just move back to that very, very quickly. This is the core. You can get away with those by mixing and using those. And if that's what your travel arrangements are suggesting, just take the one tray. But remember the light, medium and the dark. If I'm going for a slightly uh, longer trip and I have the facility to take them with me, this is my second sized um, carrying situation. This is a two layered box. And I'm still working on the principle of working around the color wheel. I'm working from the warm and the cool of each version of color and then going darker again. The list, the list that you download will have three columns in it. Those columns have got little marks on the side there, and if you want to scratch your pastels that you have, just to check that you have the range, make sure you have a light, middle and dark. The, the range is there for you. So this set is a set that I've just come back with, and I had to take several workshops. This covered me with all subjects and had um, a rich enough range 
for me to have really quite a lot of freedom with. So I'll take those away. This is actually what I would prefer. Um, there are wonderful ones that you can buy overseas. I haven't yet got to the stage of buying that little box yet because I thought while I'm waiting, I can simply make my own. So I've just got a little open out carry box and because these boxes need a lid because if I open them up and they don't have something to protect them, we're simply going to have the pastels tumble out all over us. Um, I've just put little strips between there to separate them. I've had these used where you just jam them in and you make them all really, really tight, but I've found that they're really hard to put back in and I spend too much time just trying to snuggle them in. So I've taken a few out, given myself a little bit of spacing, but when you pack them, always make sure that you've got something to cushion them. I've just got some board, cut the edges, put it in like that, top and bottom, both of them, and then I just seal areas like that. So as you can see, if I tip that one up, if it didn't have the lid, the little lid, protective lid there. Now the official boxes that you can buy simply have one extra thing. They have little slip around holders or hooks and they keep things in place. Um, I've found at this stage my masking tape is doing just as good a job. Though it is a little bit heavier than the plastic trays. Um, as well as those plastic trays with pastels, I take some Isocol. Isocol is a rubbing alcohol which I will frequently use to dissolve an underlayer for an underpainting. On nose. Masking tape, extremely important. Um, never go home without it. I use very, very tight fitting, these latex gloves will take me to any sort of a situation and if it is really hot and I'm worried about getting hot sweaty hands, all I did was pull out the centre with my um, finger and that allows my hand to breathe and also keeps my oil off my fingers, off the pastel and it also keeps my hands clean so it's not embarrassing if I have to sort of um, leave quickly. Now this is what I simply travel with. It's one of these very lightweight aluminium easels. They pack up in a little curry bag like that and they can either go on your shoulder like that or they strap onto, this is a carry bag that I use and strap on quite neatly for very easy carrying. Now, there are little containers that you can get which will slip on, they're plastic, and they just have a little loop like that, and you can put your layer of pastels on it. And there's a little strap there which holds this. Now, what I've got here is a backing board. This backing board simply is, it's a canvas panel people paint on these. The reason I like it, it's quite firm. Uh, it has a plastic layering on it, which is great if I want to stick something onto it. Um, but at the end of it, if I'm finished, I can actually do an oil painting on it. But it's very, very lightweight and sturdy. This is a 16 by 20. 16 by 20 will fit into my suitcase for travel. And what I actually do is I have two of them. And when I'm traveling, the two of them have inside there all of the work that I've been doing. And I just bulldog it around the edges like that. And I would have inside my pastel paintings that I have done with some glassine on them. Now the glassine is really important because it allows you to transport 
and protects your work beautifully. You can put a painting down, face down, face up, put more, face down, face up, and you can layer your work indefinitely. Then put them all inside. Bulldog them close together and you can have as many paintings as your bulldog clips will go around and these sit in your suitcase very, very comfortably and travel with you without any, any fear whatsoever of distressing or smudging your work because it doesn't smudge. This keeps things nice and clear and clean. Bulldogging it there, it's safe. And coming home until I'm ready to get back to the finished works, I can just store those at the side and until I'm ready to get to them. So with I take one, I always take one of them when I'm working and using it as a backing board. The only reason I turned it there around then was for it looks a bit better. And the paper I use. Now this is uh, and my tint, it's a Canson board, but I use Canson or Art Spectrum. in both the sanded pieces. This one here is A3 size. Now I work two ways, depends on the wind. I will stick them on to that board or Bulldogs on. And most of the time I actually only use the Bulldogs. It's when it's a bit windier, happy with those, but if this is flapping, I think the masking tape is a good idea to make sure it stays down and doesn't get blown away. Um, that there, let's say I finish the painting for the day. At the end of it, I simply put the mask, the glassine over the top of it. Um, it can go that way or that way. This is how I would take it home. Bulldog it there. By the way, I finish a painting by pushing it into that and it's a very good way to finish the painting but also secure it. And I would then put the other one on that, bulldog it together, pop it in my uh, carry bag and back to my hotel. Now the colours here it really depends on the type of painter you are and what you're painting. I usually like to get the individual sheets, but there's Canson and there's Art Spectrum. They're very, very easy to tell apart without knowing because one of them says my tint on it, and that's the Canson board. The Art Spectrum has no writing around the sides there. Um, they're the A3 size and you can get various colours, as you can see. I prefer this very neutral warm because that allows me to build light and dark and if I'm working on cooler subject matter, the warm just sort of seems to come through gently. I take black with me, but I don't use it frequently in the landscape. A lot of people love it because it can give a very, very strong dramatic effect. But one thing I don't take with me in the landscape a lot is green. I made the mistake once of taking green paper and trying to work on it and put lots and lots of greens on it. Work on another colour, work on a warm and you'll find the greens will work together so much more comfortably. So if I'm doing cool, I usually have a warm underneath. If I want more drama, I go for the darker shades. Um, and the dark red is lovely to have under many, many things. So I have a always have a variety, a couple of each, of a warm dark, a dark blue, a couple of rose grey type of colours, different brands, different name, and a sandy one. And just for, just in case, I always take a black one. 